is Matt Lane, the Director of Consulting Services with Hagerman & Company. Before we begin, I wanted to let you know that you are in listening-only mode. If you have questions during the presentation, please type them into the question panel on the right-hand side of your screen, and Matt will address them at the end of the presentation. Also, when you exit GoToMeeting, you will be prompted to fill out a survey. We ask that you take a few moments to fill that out. Additionally, all attendees will receive a certificate of attendance and a link to the recording of this presentation. Matt, whenever you're ready, you may begin. Thank you, Kendall, and appreciate everyone joining us here today for our session. We should be, should be able to cover the topic within 45 minutes to an hour. I think that's kind of our normal length on these webinars. And the presentation, we're going to have a, uh, a mix of format here. We're going to be doing some PowerPoint overview, some live demonstration, and then uh, a few short videos interspersed in to keep it uh, lively and present things in a variety of formats. And actually, here's a uh, look at our agenda here as we go. So just to start off there, a little background on Hagerman & Company for those of you who aren't familiar with us. We've been around just over 30 years now. We really started out in business when the CAD industry first took off as being affordable and accessible to the vast, uh, vast percentage of, of companies. Uh, the PC-based CAD, when it first came out, that's really where we started started in a single location in Illinois and then spread to a total of, I think, about 22 locations spread throughout all the states that you see there. <clears throat> then about 20 years ago, we moved into the EDM, PDM, or data management market as well as a large number of our CAD customers started having more drawings and other electronic documents and data they needed to manage. So we moved into that area as well. And over time, we've done over 400 customer implementations within that area. So we got just a wealth, wealth of experience and knowledge <clears throat> that we've garnered from that. And our company, we actually offer multiple different, actually, I'm going to jump ahead and go back one offer multiple different solutions that we'll talk about and go. Um, and then some of our customers, a lot of these customers are in the chemical and refining industry that you see, plus some others, but most of these customers here are either chemical refining or more large process type organizations. So probably you're seeing some names you're familiar with there, <clears throat> some other ones that you you might not as well. And this is just obviously just a very small subset of our customer base. Yeah, then as I mentioned, we offer three different solutions. So we try to work with each particular customer and help them determine what's going to be the right system for them rather than just having one product that we try to sell to everybody. So we offer the Autodesk data management line with Vault Basic, along with the work group and professional levels of the product, Blue Cello Meridian, and Synergist Adept. And we're going to be talking about all three of these systems here. You'll actually see all three of the products in action, also along with Autodesk Buzzsaw, which is a cloud-based collaboration tool that can allow you to better collaborate with outside engineering firms, contractors, and so on. One thing I do want to mention here is today's webinar, I would not necessarily use it as a method you know, this early to try to determine which of the three systems is best for you. We're really going to be just showing snippets of each system to illustrate some of the key functionality that is critical or beneficial for people within chemical and refining. Just from a high-level business driver standpoint, these are things that we hear from our customers in those 
in those markets. Obviously, from a you know starting off with a really high level business driver, then we'll talk more about key features and capabilities. But just some of the things we you know we hear starting at the top, moving clockwise. You know, companies are dealing with aging assets, which may threaten safety and health, and you know need to manage those assets, make documents available for repairing and maintaining them uh, to keep them going. Companies, of course, company management is always pressuring people on the operating side to get more volume, get more revenue out of the plant. They've got increased operating demand, lowering, also pressure to lower costs, be more efficient, improve operational excellence. Then, of course, with the, the government oversight, needing to maintain regulatory compliance. Uh, then. In some, some industries, especially you might see that in refining, uh, with busier driving seasons, peak demand can really stress production capacity, or maybe you know, other refineries are down for the regularly scheduled maintenance, so those still up and running have higher demand placed on them. And of course, there's also you know, ever-increasing need for each plant to lower its environmental impact. So there's some really big challenging business drivers out there that pretty much everyone in the chemical and refining industry is faced with. So, you know, we want to talk about what what can the systems we offer do to help meet those key business drivers and challenges. You know, drilling down into really our area of domain the challenges we see and hear there are, you know, companies say they've got their electronic documents stored in locations and spread around different locations, structures that are difficult or impossible for users in other departments to access and find the information they need, or maybe even users in the authoring department of the document have trouble finding and accessing documents. So we go a lot of also a lot of places where data, as opposed to documents, is stored around in different departments in a whole variety of different Excel and Access databases, you know, spread around through those different departments, different servers. There's redundant data, non-integrated data, non-accessible data, that things would operate much better if that data was more shared, but yet still secure. Also, management of change, or MOC, is a critical business process within chemical and refining, and customers need to better understand the link between those processes and the related documents. Uh, also, companies typically have challenges to locate the documents and data related to a piece of equipment that you know needing to be repaired, needing to be maintained. And then the relationship, for instance, if it's uh, detailed on a P&ID drawing, uh, to get from the P&ID to the other documents and information, or vice versa. You know, Windows is a wonderful operating system, but from a security standpoint, it's not particularly robust and granular to give you the real control you need so that the right people can access the right documents in the right way at the right time. So the systems we offer do have much better security control, and you'll see some of that in action. Also, we find companies have a challenge of their hard copy document distribution is time consuming, space consuming, prone to error, prone to people accessing incorrect, old, outdated documents. So from a goal standpoint, people are looking for easy electronic retrieval of documents, so they can type in a few search parameters, easily find the documents, and then be able to return, retrieve those documents based on a variety of different ways or search properties, like MOC number, equipment size tag number, document type, project number, drawing description, 
or other CAD drawing title block attributes. People are also looking to improve control over document revisions, revision histories, revision control, that kind of thing. Uh, another a big challenge within chemical and refining is that, you know, in most cases there's a number of projects going on in regard to the plan of equipment or buildings being upgraded, modified, replaced, and you've probably got some outside engineering firms working on those documents during the design phase, but then your current as-built still need to be accessed, and you need separation and control between the master or the as-built document and then the project working files. And that's something that uh, we can offer a solution for. Uh, also, the most chemical and process industries, P and ID drawings are utilized. And just getting more intelligence, searchability, retrievability, to be able to type in an equipment number, automatically go find the PNID drawing that it's located on, along with other related documents, or from a PNID, see an equipment number, and then quickly find all of the other related drawings. And of course, we talked about relating documents to MOC records uh, and the challenges, sharing the information. Sometimes there's hesitation really, I think, because of the limitations of the Windows operating system to share files between departments. So a lot of times if I'm in the maintenance department, I may have to walk into engineering and ask them for the file because of the security limitations there. In Windows, there's a fear of data loss or the file getting moved. So the systems we offer allow you to share that information without the risk of loss. And then, of course, we talked about you know people accessing the most current correct revision, and then reduce the amount of time that employees spend looking for data because they can just type in search parameters, find documents, have links. If I find this drawing, then it's linked to other related documents. So everything is right there at the fingertips. Also, I did mention a little bit before about collaborating with outside engineering firms, contractors, and so on. So providing a better method for creating, sending, tracking, and reporting on transmittal activity, including the documents sent out, who were they sent out to, when were they sent out, in what format, along with a linked report, a bundling of the documents the ability to know who accessed the file and when, that's a key capability. And then with improving operational efficiency, you know, cutting costs, increasing profits, <coughs> we've seen a lot of companies cut back on their internal engineering and drafting staff and the time that they have avail available to bring outdated drawings and documents up to date so there's a complete, accurate, as-built record. Well, one of the things we find in putting in a good data management system is that users in those departments are freed up from having to get documents for people or they're able to find documents more quickly, so they have more time available to really bring things up to date in terms of the correct and complete and up-to-date as-built drawings. So from data management for chemical and refining, we kind of see five key capability areas. The first being just controlling general documents, just general document management. Uh, this could be any type of document. Uh, so it could be old scanned paper drawings, it could be office documents, photographs. Then with any, you know, any company in any industry 
would have that same need, whether it's banking and finance or education or anything. But then because of the nature of the plant operations, CAD is almost always present, which brings in special needs. So chemical and refining companies need the ability for their data management system to integrate with and manage CAD and all of its special features. You know, then we talked about that change management piece of the project management, separating the as built from the project documents, managing the project workflows, that kind of thing. Uh, we talked about collaborating with external parties. And then the last probably big bullet point is integrating with asset man management or maintenance systems which are present in pretty much all large chemical or refineries. Uh, there's typically a, a maintenance management system which houses equipment records for all the pieces of equipment in the plant and then can generate work orders for repairing or maintaining those pieces of equipment. And then it's very beneficial to have a link between those systems and the data or document management system so that when somebody's in the maintenance system or on a work order, they can click and bring up all of the documents related to the piece, that piece of equipment or the pieces of equipment on that particular work order. So those are kind of the five big bullet points for key capabilities that we see as being needed within this industry. And talking about the first first feature here, controlling general documents. And the bullets you see listed here really relate to all three systems that we handle, plus really a lot of other systems on the market as well. So you're really looking for a secure document vault, managing the check-in and check-out. So if I check out a document, it's shown or highlighted in the system as being checked out to me so other people can view it, but they can't make conflicting changes. And we talked about the automatic revisioning. So when we release a new revision of a document, the revision letter or number is automatically incremented. And then we can go back to past revisions if we need to, and we're an authorized user. And then it's also very nice if there's direct integration with standard desktop applications like Microsoft Outlook, Microsoft Office, so from within those applications, you've got direct access to the document vault. That so makes the operation much more streamlined from a user standpoint. Management of all file types. So again, you know, any type of file you can store on your computer, you can, 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 you can control in the document management system. We talked about the searching and retrieving based on document properties. Microsoft Office file properties, also do content indexing and searching. So documents can be retrieved by not just their properties, but also by their text content as well. So I could type in an equipment number, and that could search inside of Word documents or PDF that refer to that particular piece of equipment. Besides the document control, companies are typically looking for workflow capabilities as well. Now that may be just document workflow for initiating a change on a document, routing it to a particular user to make the change, reviewing it with the, in, the engineering department, getting the approval from other departments, or it could actually be business process workflow such as corrective action procedures, maybe mapping the MOC process as a workflow in the system. And again, systems we offer do that type of thing as well. And then web client capabilities. Uh, most companies want the capability of having the data management tool installed as a desktop application, but also for thin client, uh, ease on the IT side, or remote access having the capabilities of the data and document management system available through a web browser as well. Now if we flip over and just take a look at one of the systems here to get started, in fact I want to, I'm going to switch back to a different vault here quickly. 
This is Meridian system, and the user, you'll see all three user interfaces between Meridian, Vault, and Adept. They're all fairly similar in that they organize documents into folders and subfolders, just like you're used to in Windows. But then having the data and document management system, all those system and custom properties that are available for display, searching, sorting as columns, however you configure it. And you can see I can manage all different types of documents. I've got a drawing here. If I go to a, I go to a product instruction, and down here I've got my viewer. Uh, so integrated viewing is a, a typical feature of the systems where I was able to view the CAD drawing within the system without having CAD. Now I can view a PDF. If I go up here to functional specification, you know that's a Word document. So all that is viewable. And then also my extended document properties are available in library cards as well that are typically configurable as far as what you want to track documents by. Enter the values, edit the values, and so on. And then if we look at uh, Vault here quickly, you can see the similar user interface. Things may be in different positions on the screen, but the same types of information are there. And then we talked about the security. We're typically in a system like this. If I go in to administration, And the level of capability does vary between the different systems. But here you can see we've got different types of user roles. So if somebody's put into the document consumer role, these are the permissions that they have. Remember we talked about Windows. With Windows, it's only read, modify, delete. Those are the only permissions that are there. Where here, if I go to document or administrator, Instead of there being three permissions, these are all the permissions that are available within a data management system. So you can much better control what a user can do. Basically, somebody in the administrator role can do anything. Somebody in the consumer or viewer role can just do these things. Somebody in document editor level one can do these things. Somebody in document editor level two can do these things. Beyond that, for more control, I might be a document editor, but these are just general office documents. It can be configured so that, say I'm in the engineering group, a specific user or user group, can be dialed back using folder permissions for particular folders and subfolders and so on. Also again, I may be a document editor. Let's say a document is in a review state. You can see some of my different states here, work in progress, release. So if I've edited the document and then sent it on to others for review, I may normally be an editor. But if it's sitting in a review state, for review, again, say my engineering group, if something is for review, we may normally be editors. But that permission can be taken away if something happens to be in review. So again, you can see without this type of capability, you can see why people can be hesitant to share drawings or share files. But with a data or document management system with this type of inherent security, you can be much more confident that the right people have the right access at the right time to the right files.
We also talked about integrating with and managing CAD. Now that may just start with standard vanilla 2D AutoCAD, which is fairly simple to manage. But you know, as we go up in complexity, a lot of times companies with AutoCAD they may have they may use XREF or they may have hybrid files where a scan drawing or a photograph has been embedded or linked within an AutoCAD DWG file. And as you bring in more and more of this functionality, it really drives the need for having a tool like Vault, Adept, or Meridian, which has specific CAD support. Uh, also, as we're seeing more and more of the AutoCAD-based verticals, like Plant 3D, PNID, AutoCAD Electrical, or Inventor, MicroStation, and SolidWorks, they have more specific needs for CAD integration. And some of these tools actually have their own project or database files, specifically like Plant 3D and PNID would be an example. So a data management tool would need to have knowledge and integration with those things if you happen to be using within their, their plan in order to understand and manage those complex file interrelationships, interrelationships, whether it's file to file interrelationships like between AutoCAD drawings with x refs inventor models between the assemblies, sub-assemblies, and drawings, or AutoCAD electrical with its project file and the drawings that make up the, the project. Also, you probably, within a, a plant, have a few people that have CAD, but a bunch of people that need to view those CAD files. So companies are typically looking for built-in capabilities for viewing, redlining, and printing CAD files. So anybody in the company who has access to the data management tool can view, redline, or print those CAD files. Also, title block linking. A lot of good information is typically in your CAD title block that is excellent to use for searching and retrieving files. So a key capability is that information in a title block is automatically indexed into the data management tool database whenever a file is saved into the vault so then users can retrieve files. And then also inside CAD application integration so that from inside any AutoCAD based product, Inventor, MicroStation, SolidWorks, users within those CAD tools can check in, check out, add files without having to switch out of those applications to do it. And finally, automated PDF publishing. More people are wanting to go to this, so people who are just viewers Instead of viewing the native CAD file, they're actually viewing a PDF rendition of the CAD file and then having that PDF automatically generated whenever a new CAD file is checked in or released. So those PDFs are then automatically available for viewers within the plant or to be sent out to outside vendors and so on. So we take a, take a bit of a look at this. I got a bunch of stuff open here. Uh, this time we'll take a look at ADEPT and its user interface. So again, we see folders and subfolders here. I'm in this architectural folder. Here's a list of the files here. These are the uh, display columns I've got turned on now. I can configure those however I want. Here's my DWG file. I can see a thumbnail of it, or I can say view it and it brings it up in the integrated CAD viewer where there are full capabilities for zooming, zooming in, zooming out, turning layers on and off, uh, seeing multiple sheets within here, analysis so I can do 2D measurements or advanced 3D measurements, doing markups for red lines, those kinds of things. So all that viewing capability is built in. You can see that drawing looked kind of incomplete. Uh, so down here, 
in my detail panel for the file, if I go to where used, we can actually see that this particular file is an XREF that's XREFed into these parent drawings. So I know if I change this file, these parent XREFs will be impacted. Also, I can see that this file was sent out on this particular transmittal. So that's automatically tracked as well. And these relationships are just automatically tracked and created. Uh, also, I can see that this drawing I selected is, is also a parent file. So I've got this dash 4 drawing x into dash 2, and then the dash 2 drawing is x into the dash 5 drawing. So I can, that whole hierarchy of XREF relationships is automatically tracked. Uh, if I do go to versions, I can see the version history on that file. Also, if I click library card, here's my property page or library card for this particular file. And probably a lot of this information was automatically indexed in from the drawing title block. So if I can edit my title block, it would update my library card, or if I fill out my library card, it can populate my title block for me. Or similarly, if we go over and look at Autodesk Vault, we can see a similar arrangement. Or in this case, if I bring up Autodesk Inventor, and this would be a typical data management add-in, from within my CAD tool here, I can log in or log out of Vault, open and check out files from the Vault right inside here, place components into the assembly, check in, check out, or down here on any of the children, perform data management operations on those from within the CAD tool as well. And you can see here, you know, just the sheer number of different, just from Autodesk, their sheer number of CAD tools that are out there. So it's definitely growing from just beyond the vanilla AutoCAD days. Then on the change management side, you know, some of the challenges and features there, are, we talked about the document approval and business process workflow, management of multiple overlapping engineering projects, and then separation of current as-built drawings from work in prog progress project changes. And if we take a look at an example of that capability here in Meridian, uh, let's pretend that this is probably not most aptly named structure, but let's pretend that this, uh, this structure here under project that relates my, my as-built structure. Now we've got this particular file here, and that's my current as-built, but now we're going, we need to start a change on that particular file because it's going to be changed as part of some particular plant project we've got going on. Now we can use our start change function, check in, check out, start change, that kind of thing. But instead of doing that, one thing that Meridian does is include managed change functionality with an assign to folder function. So instead of initiating the change in place right on my current as-built, which could cause some issues for my plant people or cause some confusion, I can set up a projects area. And you can actually see here this little padlock link here. And if I highlight on it, it says, okay, released, locked in project. What that's telling me is I'm looking at the released version of the document, but it's actually locked for change because it's been assigned to a project. 
And if I click on the document property page, show reference document, I can see here's my drawing. And then here's my project copy. If I go to it, so actually this file here and it's as built down here are linked together. So the way this works is when you assign a document to a project for change and either you know, process that change internally or send it out to a vendor, you can assign it to a project folder which will lock the as built and then do your check in, check out, workflow, review, approval in the project folder where you can see it related and tied back to its parent. And then when you're done, you can release the project document back to its as-built structure and it becomes the new as-built. So you've got that separation between the project copies and the as-built. We also talked about a bit about how important it is within chemical and chemical plants and refineries for collaborating with external parties. You know, some of those features could be creating the document transmittals we talked about, importing incoming document packages, and then also integrating with various different cloud-based collaboration tools like a basic Dropbox or I don't know, Buzzsaw where Blue Cello has their project portal. Now if we look at the Meridian tool, one thing they have built in is their document import tool. Well, what it's designed to do is a vendor can send you a set of drawings with a spreadsheet and then fill out the information and you can actually save configurations, they might send you a thousand files, a hundred files with a spreadsheet that lists the files and lists the document properties and then fill out this information or you know, save it um, if you've got a standard format and then hit go and it will do mass importing of all the vendor documents and fill out their properties and put all the files in the correct folder within your system. Or if we talk a little bit more about electronic access, you know, a lot of people are still using email or FTP for sending out files. But just some of the challenges there, you know, again, getting back to some of the security issues, um, lack of viewing, redlining, markup capabilities, lack of accountability to know who accessed files and when. In some cases, uh, lack of notification so project teams are not automatically notified when new or updated information is available. FTP sites or maybe low-end tools for cloud collaboration don't version the files when updated editions are uploaded. Um, they get information that's overwritten or old versions used by the team. Of course, we all know emailing large CAD files is typically not possible because your IT people typically place the limits on file attachment size. And then generic solutions don't address XREF management or other specific CAD needs. So there are advantages of going to a cloud-based collaboration tool, and the one I'm going to show here in a bit is the Autodesk Buzzsaw, which is specifically designed for construction projects and specifically designed for working with CAD. You've got a secure web-based platform for managing permissions, integrated viewing and redlining, an audit trail so you know exactly who accessed what files when, what was uploaded, email notifications, version control, 
also includes compression and, and encryption of files, and then uh, pretty low cost, total cost of ownership. Uh, at this point, I'm going to go to a short movie for showing Buzzsaw. Ah, I, I should have closed some stuff down before I started my presentation here. So this is kind of a, a basic overview of Buzzsaw. It's about it's about five minutes or so. If I can get some volume here. Software that you would install on your computer locally. Bear with me just a second. Well, apparently these speakers are not going to work for me. be given the opportunity to give Kay Lewis permission. And so 
You can do that by clicking on this radio button that says Create Key Lewis with the following permissions in the current project. So if she's going to be an admin, we would indicate it here. Or if we want her to just to be able to review the drawing, we would do that here. So I'm going to go ahead and say Review, Create. And I'm not going to send her an email at this time, but you can set up notifications so that each member that you add will be given permissions to log in. So here are my members for my project. I can create different groups. So if I create a new group, I can just start to add each of these people and then change their permissions together at once. This will obviously be much more efficient. Under the Permissions tab, you can see here that you can begin to say, all right, well, S. Costa, as the civil engineer, should, able, should be able to actually edit these drawings, not just queue them. So each of the icons are listed here in the legend. And then you can change those individually, as well as change them not only by folder, but as well by file. So we can say apply. And then when we jump over to the activity log, this is really important because you can now see who's accessing which files and when. So people can say that they do not see a file if they are shown that they have accessed it here. So let's just talk about how one would use Revit and Buzz all together. There's two options. One would be to actually publish straight from Revit to Buzzsaw, DWF or DWG. And the other is to use what's called Buzzsaw Sync. Buzzsaw Sync is the method that I recommend. I think at this point I'm going to suspend that movie. And of course, uh, and you saw Buzzsaw there, which Buzzsaw is actually a standalone system, and there's, uh, you know, others as well. And then we saw Depth, Vault, and Meridian. Well, with all of those systems also have the capability for the data management tool, internal data management tool, to synchronize with a cloud-based collaboration tool so that upon the certain functions you do in your internal data management system, files will automatically be posted to the cloud for vendor access, or if vendors post new files, they're automatically brought into your data management system. So it basically synchronizes and integrates those two systems together. Uh, so you've got automated synchronization, it can be scheduled or continuous, and it can be bi-directional and handle adding, moving, deleting, modifying, and renaming files. So a very integrated, controlled solution if we want to see that in action. We've got a just a short, quick movie here showing the integration with Buzzsaw, again, as an example. Once I see the green check, 
I know that those files are in sync. Now, let's look at the other Buzzsaw Sync settings. First, here's the synchronization settings. I can choose to synchronize continuously, manually, or once a day at a specific time. Next, let's take a look at the other menu where I can remove a synchronization, update my login information, or get a quick view of my sync folders and navigate directly to those folders on my local system. And finally, we're going to look at a very important feature, the sync log. This log tracks every activity on all of my Buzzsaw sync folders, so I can quickly see when the last synchronization occurred, when files were downloaded, when files were uploaded, and I can also select a file to get more information if I need it. And finally, from the sync log, I can navigate directly to that file. So with Autodesk Buzzsaw Sync, project teams can securely synchronize, exchange, and access the project information on their local system without having to interrupt their workflow. To learn more, I hope that volume was okay. I uh, never could get those speakers working, so I had to use my internal computer speakers. I put the my phone right up next to the uh, speaker, so hopefully that volume was okay. Uh, now the last big bullet item we wanted to talk about, if you recall, was integrating with asset management or maintenance systems. And typically, what we see, you know, here in the engineering department, cloud, you know, that's where you're managing the drawings and possibly other documents that relate to those pieces of equipment. Then over here in the maintenance department, they might have a system like SAP Preventive Maintenance, Maximo, Oracle, or some of the other systems where they're managing equipment records and then doing maintenance scheduling, work orders, that kind of thing. And if, when somebody pulls up a piece of equipment or a work order with pieces of equipment on it, they're going to, out of the engineering department, they're going to want to have those documents. So it would be very handy if somebody from the maintenance, with somebody in the maintenance system, if they could just click a button and it would go to the data management system and grab all the proper documents. So we'll be taking a look at as an example, what Bluecello Meridian can do with that type of integration with Maximo. So here you can see here's an equipment record in Maximo. And then in Maximo, there's a button, a custom button called Engineering Documents. When you click on that, based on equipment 11450, it goes over to Meridian and retrieves all of the documents related to that piece of equipment, so then your maintenance planner or your maintenance technician has all the correct documents available immediately. And we can take a quick look at that in action as well. New channel provides standard integration with major asset management systems. An example is the integration of InnoCello and Maximo. In this video, we will be showing you how you can work with InnoCello and Maximo to manage all your asset management needs. To start out with, we will be looking at the integration available from the operations and maintenance point of view using the Maximo client. For this demonstration, we will start from a function. That volume is very low, so I'll, I'll just try to integrate this. Where here you can see, so in Maximo, they brought up a piece of equipment. In this case, it's integrated with an attached documents button that does a query to Meridian and retrieves, automatically re retrieves all of the documents related to that piece of equipment. Then in Meridian, that's really where all those links are managed. And those links can be set up based on document properties, um, manual links that are created between equipment records and documents, 
Uh, also, Meridian has the capability to automatically build links based on extracted information from drawings like T&ID drawings and equipment numbers and build those particular links. So here you can see somebody from Maximo has been able to click and go right in and see that Meridian document without having to separately go to both systems. They can print from there. Or again, view. Um, also, the markup tool is available. And so on. And I think I'll just go ahead and pause that or stop that video here. Uh, other important capabilities within refineries and chemical plants, uh, management of scan drawings. So a system you put into a typical plant, you need generally need the ability to manage legacy scan drawings. Also, you may have had an older system in place and want to migrate to a newer modern system like Vault, Adept, or Meridian. So tools for migrating from the legacy system can be important. Uh, taking out a block of drawing numbers and creating templates to send out to vendors for working on can be important. Um, so those are kind of the main, main things there. And then again, back to our five big bullet points we talked about as the, kind of the five key capabilities needed within the industry. And again, I do want to caution today, don't, uh, don't use this session as much to try to determine which, which of the three systems is right for you, more as it's trying to use demonstrations of the three systems to highlight and illustrate the general functionality. Um, so if you have further interest, then we want to be of, of further assistance to then really try to help define which of the three systems might be best for you. At this point, we can go, I'm going to go to my question panel and don't know if anyone has added any questions yet, but you can use your question panel to type those in here. And we'll hold that open for a minute or two before we close to see if anyone has any questions they'd like to ask. Kendall, while we're waiting, do you have any wrap-up comments or instructions on your end? Uh, sure, Matt. Uh, thank you for a great presentation today. This does include conclude our broadcast, but we will be leaving over the open the questions panel for just two or three more minutes in, in case ha anyone has any questions. Um, if you still have questions after we close, please just reply to the confirmation or reminder email you receive from GoToMeeting, and we will get those to the appropriate party. Also, you'll be receiving an email containing a link to the recording of today's presentation. Once again, if you could please take a few moments to answer the short survey, we would appreciate it. It will automatically appear when you close the session. Thank you for attending today's webcast and have a great day. All right, I'm not seeing any questions, so I think uh, we'll go ahead and end the broadcast. And once again, thank everybody for attending, and hopefully we can be of assistance to you down the road. Thank you.